The Samsung M8 monitor is a 32 inch monitor that's been designed to actually look nice in a home office. Plus it has a detachable webcam and most importantly, this monitor doubles as a smart TV. But for $700, is it actually worth the price? First, let's take a look at that smart TV feature. This functionality after six months of owning this display is what has stood out to me the most and it's a feature that makes a ton of sense if you have a desk in your bedroom and don't also have a TV. It supports HDR10 though not Dolby Vision, supports all the major TV streaming apps you'd expect and even has Samsung TV Plus which offers live free content with no downloads or signups which is pretty cool. Now if this monitor didn't come with a remote the TV viewing experience would it would suck. But thankfully, Samsung did include a remote and it's actually pretty great. And the remote also makes navigating the monitor's menus to set it up very easy. The monitor also has Alexa built in so you can control your smart home or get weather information right from the display. And because it has Amazon's assistant built in, you can also use the assistant to turn on and off the display as well. The other thing I really like about this monitor is its overall design. It comes in different colors to match your room's aesthetic and looks like somebody actually put some thought into the aesthetic where most monitors just typically look either cheap or ugly. The height adjustment with the monitor stand works well, although the tilt mechanism feels a bit janky. But overall, I'm a fan of this design, especially the removable webcam that even comes with its own removable cap. So that's what I like about the display, but now let's talk about why that display is not the one currently sitting on my desk. And that's because over the past six months, I just ran into too many downsides with the M8 for it to be the main display that I use for my everyday computing tasks. The first downside I found is speaker quality. It's okay, but not great like my studio display speakers. So if you want to do a lot of TV watching on it, you might be tempted to buy better speakers to help improve the sound quality, which is what I would do in this scenario. Unfortunately, this is a bit more challenging because Samsung did not put an audio out jack on this monitor, which limits the type of speakers you could potentially set up with it. Now I've seen some people have tried to use like Wi-Fi speakers, cast audio somehow from the M8 to those or Bluetooth. I've seen a lot of people try to do this, but also report back problems with going the Bluetooth route, which makes sense because in my experience, almost always when you try to get audio from a display to Bluetooth speakers, something inevitably goes wrong. So I almost always think it is not worth the purchase going the Bluetooth speaker route. The second downside I found with this display is the camera quality. The resolution of the camera looks okay, but the color processing just looks bad, which really sucks because the hardware design of the camera overall is actually pretty great. I think Apple's continuity camera idea for webcams is actually a much better solution if you have an iPhone. You get a larger megapixel sensor from the iPhone's rear camera system paired with best-in-class image processing for video. Also, the mic quality, it's just okay. Another downside to be aware of with this monitor is how Samsung designed the ports in the back. If you're often unplugging cords to switch USB inputs, it can be a real pain, unlike other monitors like my studio display. Also, the included USB-C cable is going to be too short if you plan to use this monitor with a desktop sitting on the floor on a with your desk, or if you plan to use it with a standing desk. The next downside I found with this monitor, and this is a big one, is actually picture quality and color accuracy. Color accuracy out of the box just isn't great. I could never feel like I could get this monitor to look as good as some other monitors that I've used. And this is the predominant reason why I purchased a studio display, which out of the box has great color accuracy, white balance, and plus it's a 5K display. So it's gonna look way more crisp than the Samsung M8 monitor, which is a larger display, but only 4K resolution. The last two downsides I found with the M8 are one, if you put it on a standing desk, I found the display can wobble more than the desk itself, which can be a bit annoying. And lastly, the M8, like a lot of monitors in this price range, comes with a power brick. This isn't a big deal if your desk is stationary, but if it's a standing desk like mine, it's just gonna be one more thing you have to cable manage and it weighs a good bit too. 
Also, one thing to keep in mind with the M8 that isn't a true deal breaker is the setup experience. It can actually take a bit longer than a traditional monitor to set up, and setup is more involved because of those smart TV features. For example, if you want to set it up with your phone, you'll need to download the Samsung SmartThings app. But thankfully, you can just use the included remote to do this as well. So those are all of the downsides I've found with the M8 monitor. Now let's talk about who I think this monitor is for. The the Samsung M8 monitor I think would be a good monitor for somebody that really prioritizes the aesthetic of how their monitor looks in their room and isn't very picky when it comes to display quality, mic quality, or especially speaker quality. You want a big screened monitor with a nice aesthetic, plus it can double as a smart TV. Where the M8 falls down for me, of course, is with display quality. Out of the box, it's just not as good as some competing monitors from other brands like Dell and LG. Plus, the sound output options should be better given how central the smart TV functionality is to the value prop of the M8. If you only need a computer monitor and you don't care at all about the smart TV features, I think you can definitely skip out on the Samsung M8 monitor, especially if you're like me and you need to do a lot of photo and video editing on a Mac. Even though it's more than double the price, the studio display, in my experience, has been a great display for that scenario, and we just recently reviewed it, link down below in the description. If you'd like to purchase the Samsung M8 or one of the other monitors mentioned, I've left purchase links here in this video and in the description below so you can see up-to-date pricing information for the M8 and the other monitors mentioned. Hit that thumbs up button if you like this video and subscribe to the channel to see more long-term reviews like this one. And if you're looking for what to watch next, check out some of our other reviews by clicking on the playlist to the right. For six months later, I'm Josh Tedder. Thanks for watching.